Sporting Journal Radio, presented by Onyx. All right, the ice fishing season is here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about ice fishing up at the Walleye Capital Lake of the Woods right now with Joe Henry from Lake of the Woods Tourism. Joe, how's it going? Hello, I'm doing good, Brad. How are you? So if people are wanting to plan a trip up to Lake of the Woods, one of the best places you can start with, and we're, we're going to get an ice report and a fishing report here, but uh, the, the start of planning a trip to Lake of the Woods starts on your website, right? Because you can find all these different resorts there in one place and uh, find out where you might, might be able to stay. Well, I'll tell you something. So we have resorts, hotels, sleeper fish house businesses, Airbnbs, VRBOs. We have everything on the Lake of the Woods MN.com website. In addition, we have a lot of really helpful information, including videos and such about, about ice fishing, about you uh, working the one-two punch, how to get walleyes to eat, uh, what, what kind of lures to use in stained water. I mean, really, we have everything. And I'll tell you the other thing is this is the time of year where things can get pretty busy, especially on weekends. It's the holidays and everybody has off. So, you know, if you want to make that last second trip up the Lake of the Woods, there is still hope. And one of the tools we have is called the Lodging Availability Finder. Basically, you put in your contact information. You put in um, what part of the lake you want to stay at. Do you want to stay up at the Northwest Angle or do you want to stay in the South End slash, you know, Rainy River? And then you simply uh, um, put in special requests in there. Hey, I'd like a, you know, lodging for four nights and uh, fish house for three days or whatever. And then you hit submit. And that email is sent to all the different lodging facilities within the geographic area you selected. So rather than dialing for dollars, you can send that out in one blast. And in many cases, when they have openings and such, they can email you back. I got to tell you, well before I was tourism director, I'd, uh, I'd get an opportunity to run up to Lake of the Woods on a weekend, maybe spur of the moment. I'd just jump on my car and freaking go. And I'd have a list of phone numbers that I'd be dialing on the way up, trying to find a place to stay. And it was really interesting because that – that process, they didn't have this kind of tool back then, but that process is really what got me staying at some of the behind the scenes resorts, some of the real small nook and cranny places that I actually kind of knew before I even became tourism director. And I want to make good friends with them. I stayed there over and over, but I never would have even known of their names because maybe they don't have the big marketing engine that some of these smaller places, you know, uh, um, do, or some of the bigger places do, I should say. So what I want to do, Joe, is I want to stay at the south end and then take a snowmobile up to the northwest angle. Well, you know, you're in luck because uh, Friday, uh, Friday, December 17th is when that trail opens up. I, uh, I had the, I had the pr- pleasure of speaking to Greg Henham. Greg Henham is the owner of uh, Sportsman's Lodge. He also has started that uh, Lake of the Woods passenger service, which is that bombardier and or charter boat service that takes people from the south end up to the northwest angle. He he grooms the snowmobile trail going up to the angle. So him and Mike Markor, one of his guides, uh, they typically are together in that deal. Now imagine, before that process even starts, Brett, they're, uh, they're looking at satellite images of the lake, trying to get a, an idea of how the ice is forming um, up that route. And then, of course, they actually fly the lake in an airplane, getting a, a much closer look at everything. And then when they actually go up there, he was telling me, what he does is he go up on snowmobiles and he actually stands up and goes at a moderate place, but he stands and really watches that ice. Cause he can tell just from years of experience. I mean, he grew up on the lake, but he can tell by watching, looking at that ice when things are a little bit kitty wampus and when, and when maybe ice conditions change, he can tell by different colors. You can tell by there's a bunch of charred ice with, you know, ridges sticking up and all of a sudden there's a real smooth part. Well, chances are that smooth part was open water and it froze late. Um, you can tell where water's been, uh, you know, before it froze up, there might have been ice with open water and it was real windy. So that water, the waves were lapping up on that, under the ice and you can see where it froze that way. I mean, you could tell a lot of things, he said, just by looking at the ice. So anyway, they go up there and they mark it and they check all those, the areas that don't have real thick ice. And then what they do is they keep watching those thin ice areas until they get to the point where they're they're acceptable. And, and then the trail staked. So that's going to happen uh, again tomorrow morning. Um, and I should say too, you know, you, you've driven on that trail. It's kind of neat how they do it. They have these big black stakes that show up so good against the ice and snow. And then on top of those stakes are real bright reflectors that uh, if you're going at night, uh, you can see them real well. Are they getting walleyes up there right now, Joe? Yeah, they're getting walleyes up there. Um, they're just, you know, they all start a little bit later up at the Northwest angle. Um, but yeah, their, their houses are staged. Some of the guides are pre-fishing. And uh, uh, I talked to one guy, I don't want to make you jealous, but um, he says, yeah, you know, we got our houses in one spot. It's more of a morning, evening bite. And I said, well, 
enough to get your limit. <laughs> First half hour of the day, you'll have your limit. It's just a matter of if you want to go home and take a nap in the afternoon or just stay out there and try to catch a few. <laughs> so that, that was kind of fun. And then, um, uh, yeah, and then, you know, in the south end of the lake, it's been a bonsai. I mean, it's been really, really good. And, you know, um, the, the overall fishing report, it changes every day and it changes with different places you fish. But overall, um, anglers are rifling through a lot of numbers of fish, walleyes and saugers. They're getting their fish to keep. And they're also getting some some nice trophies like like you see there, um, yeah. It's been uh, it's been real real good. And you know the trophies, but realistically, you're going to get one once in a while if you're fishing up at Lake of the Woods. But uh, you're going to get numbers, and within those numbers, you'll get your keepers typically. Boy, it's been really good fishing as of late. What about chasing something other than walleyes up there? Maybe pike or sturgeon. Yeah, you know, uh, I'll tell you, uh, there there have been some. Uh, anglers that are pike nuts out tip up fishing and normally they have those areas all to themselves but they have just been smoking the big pike uh if, if you're watching this on video you can see the size of this big pike coming out of the water and this thing is just a freaking tank and the coolest thing about it is it's probably a 44 inch i think and the coolest thing about it it's got a a, a digested eel pout probably a two pound <laughs> eel pout yeah. coming out of its belly out of its mouth it uh, it kind of basically upchucked it when it was probably fighting but yeah. it is just the coolest darn video uh, ever if you like pike fishing they've been smacking pike people are catching you know going after them and then of course sturgeon fishing most of that happens on the river in fact one of our resorts rainy uh, sorry um royal dutchman resort which is just east of Bedette on the rainy river they're out checking ice conditions and they actually have fish houses out for sturgeon and their sturgeon houses have bigger fish holes. They're set up uh, so you're playing the current. You know, when you're when you're ice fishing in, in, in current, um, you're, you're, you set your house up so that all the lines are going downstream. You don't want the lines crossing each other. So they got all that dialed in. They got they know where the safe areas are, and uh, they're doing a really nice job of getting people on sturgeon, which, you know, really most of our resorts don't do. Most of our resorts are dialed in on walleyes and saugers on the lake. These guys are – they get walleyes and saugers on the river too, but they're getting dialed in on sturgeon, which – Boy, for something different, and they've been getting them. In fact, one of the uh, one of the videos they have up, somebody got a sixty-six incher. Uh, they got oh, one uh, just under through 60, the ice. I think. Through the ice, and boy, Man. when you when you watch that video, you can tell these guys are armed for sturgeon. They're using uh, uh, pretty good size open face reels with a heavier, beefier ice rod. And then when they're fighting this thing, I mean, they're hanging on to that little rod with all they have, and uh, that thing is just ripping line. And then finally, when they get it up, I think somebody grabbed. I think in one case, they probably grabbed it under the under the gills and mouth and put them up in the ice. But I think in one other case, they tailed it. You know, they grabbed that, the, the, the tail on a sturgeon's hard. So yeah. you can actually grab that tail and pull them out of the water. And, um, really some uh, some neat stuff. I've caught sturgeon through the ice before on Lake of the Woods. Um, it was accidental fishing for walleyes. You know, uh, one time I, uh, it was just right at that prime time, you know, that the golden hour at night, just sun was going down. I had a big mark coming on my, uh, my Vexlar and I jigged it and boom, it hit. I set that hook. I'm not kidding. My rod broke. So I, I, I had him in my real office. Like, give me a line. Give me a line. And, uh, and I fought this thing. And, you know, I didn't know it was a sturgeon probably for the first five minutes. I was hoping it was a big walleye. Then I thought big pike. And then I'm like, okay, I think I know what this probably is. It took me an hour and a half to get it in. And oh, uh, it was dark out by the time I got it up. And, and we got it. And uh, so it was kind of fun. But I've gotten a couple of sturgeon through the ice. And, you know, it takes a little time, but it is fun. You better pull up all your lines when you get a sturgeon on. Let me yeah. just tell you. Well, I'm, I'm all about catching walleyes, and I love catching big walleyes, too. Um, and especially if you're going to Lake of the Woods, you're going to want to target walleyes a little bit, I'm sure. But being able to fight something that big, you know, uh, I mean, just the chance to fight, you know, and something that might take you an hour and a half. I mean, that's that's not something you can just do anywhere, and that's not the, the type of experience you're going to get, you know, every day. So having the opportunity to catch a dinosaur like that would be pretty fun. You know, it's it's arguably the biggest fish you'll catch in freshwater, you know, yeah. and uh, I'll tell you what, you know, you, you've you caught sturgeon. I know you have. And, you know, when you when you take a, a heavy rod and reel with heavy line and you put the freaking beef to them and you put pulling that thing off the bottom and it won't budge, yeah. you know, you're in for a fight. Those I tell you, those sturgeon, they're not lackadaisical. They freaking fight. If I, in open water, they jump out of the water and things like that. Obviously, ice fishing, they run like crazy. They'll rip that line off your reel like you, un, like there's no tomorrow. For sure. Yeah. Well, Joe. Yeah, there, there we are. I was, I was filming a TV <laughs> show with Greg Jones in this one. I couldn't get that darn sturgeon in the boat. That's a third try. And I'm like, Greg, I need help. I'm not letting him go. 
and he came and double teamed them and we got him in. But I'll tell you, you know, uh, it's like pulling in a dead body. Not that I know what that's like, but you know, I tell you, what, it's, <laughs> I hope not. They're, they're they're not that easy to get in because they're big fish, you know. Jeez, yeah. Well, if people want to get up there and uh, chase a big giant sturgeon or some big giant walleyes or some big giant pike uh, or do some snowmobiling and all the trails that you got up there, what should they do, Joe? Hey, check out our website. That is a lake of the woods, mn.com. Hear more at sportingjournalradio.com or wherever you get podcasts.